three times God spoke audibly to Jesus. Number 1. Baptism During this time, we meet John the Baptist. All four Gospels testify to the ministry of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was six months older than his cousin Jesus. He appeared on the stage of history to play the role of a forerunner to the future king of Israel. His unlikely parish was the wilderness of Judea, an arid area extending from Jerusalem to the Jordan. The message that John preached was summarized as follows. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus made the journey from Galilee to the lower Jordan River, which is approximately 60 miles away, in order to be baptized by John. This demonstrates the significance that he placed on the event, and it should display the relevance of baptism for his disciples in the modern era. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 16 Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan River to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, vigorously protesting, saying, It is I who need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus replied to him, Permit it just now. For this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John permitted it and baptized him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up immediately out of the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him, Jesus. As Jesus arrived in John's presence in the Jordan Valley from Galilee, John tried to deter him. Because John's teaching was all about repentance, and he regarded it as inappropriate and unthinkable for him to baptize the Messiah, because Jesus had done nothing that needed to be repented of. Instead, John told him, I need to be baptized by you. But Jesus insisted on being baptized, because doing so was the way to fulfill all righteousness. In his death on the cross, Jesus would bear the transgressions of sinners. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 He made Christ who knew no sin, to judicially be sin on our behalf, so that in him, we would become the righteousness of God. That is, we would be made acceptable to Him and placed in a right relationship with Him by His gracious loving kindness. This baptism would also identify Jesus with John and affirm His kingdom message. All three members of the Godhead inaugurated Jesus' public ministry. As Jesus rose from the water, the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove, and the voice of God the Father proclaimed, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. No other ministry commissioning service can compare to this one. The Father and the Spirit publicly endorsed the Son for his kingdom mission. Thus, he was prepared for battle with the enemy. As soon as Jesus emerged from the water, he saw the Spirit of God come down from heaven in the form of a dove and land on him. Just as persons and things in the Old Testament were consecrated to sacred purposes by the holy anointing oil, so he was anointed Messiah by the Holy Spirit. It was a hallowed occasion, but all three members of the Trinity were evident. As Jesus came up from the water, heaven was opened. This divine passive hints that God is opening heaven's communication gates to reveal something meaningful. This is a common expression in scripture, to refer to important moments of God revealing something essential to his people. Jesus then saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. The Spirit does not take the form of a dove, but rather some visible manifestation, 
indicating the actual descent of the Spirit on Jesus. The dove symbol expresses characteristics often associated with the dove, such as gentleness and peace, in contrast to judgment. Recall the dove sent out by Noah to determine whether God's time of judgment had ended, or the superintending and creative action of the Spirit hovering over the waters of the new creation. Jesus' anointing by the Spirit is both the coordination of Israel's Messiah and the commissioning of God's righteous servant for the work he will now carry out in the power and presence of the Spirit. The symbolism of the dove is made explicit as a voice sounds out from heaven. With the arrival of the prophetic figure John the Baptist, with the descent of the Spirit on the anointed Messiah, and with the voice from the Father, God is resuming direct communication. The statement, This is my Son, whom I love, calls to mind the well-known image of Father and Son in Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my Son. This day I proclaim I have begotten you. The expression, Whom I love, may have evoked images of Isaac, who was called Abraham's son, your only son whom you love. But more important is the relationship that is declared between Jesus and the voice. Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 God said, Take now your son, your only son of promise whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. This is not language used in adoption. Rather, it is language used to confirm an already existent divine loving relationship between the Heavenly Father and His Son. Through the anointing by the Spirit, the Father formally inaugurates Jesus into His public ministry as the unique Son who was the triumphant Messianic King, yet the humble servant. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 1 Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. In coming to his people Israel, he will carry out the will of his Father, but at the same time, he will provide hope to the nations. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Number 2. The Transfiguration The Transfiguration of Jesus was one of the most incredible events in the Word of God. It was the glorification of the human body of Jesus. His body underwent a change in form. The event took place after Jesus revealed who he truly was. Jesus took his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, a city about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee where there was a temple honoring the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. It was here that Jesus said to his followers, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 2 After discussing his identity, mission, and the cost of discipleship with his disciples, Jesus led Peter, James, and his brother John up a high mountain. He was supernaturally transfigured at the time. The magnificence of the coming king and his realm was shown to these three Jewish fishermen. In describing the event, 
Peter says that Jesus' clothes became brighter than any bleaching agent on earth could make them. He actually uses the word detergent, or fuller, which was the equivalent in those days. The light was shining through Jesus' clothes from the inside, and they saw his glory. He met with Moses and Elijah to discuss his exodus, whereby he would accomplish a release for his people as Luke records. His face and garments became luminous like the sun and blazing light, a visual representation of his deity. Just as the glory cloud or Shekinah represented God's presence in the Old Testament. The sight foreshadowed what the Lord Jesus will be like when he returns to establish his kingdom. He will no longer be known as the sacrificial lamb, but as the lion of Judah. Everyone who sees him will recognize him as God the Son, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. As if that weren't enough, two prominent Old Testament characters, Moses and Elijah, arrived and conversed with Jesus. This scene shows that persons who have died, such as Moses, have cognitive understanding and the ability to communicate. Together, they symbolize all those who make up God's kingdom, those who will be raptured and not see death, like Elijah, and those who will die and go to be with the Lord, like Moses. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. Matthew chapter 17 verses 4 through 6. The glorious scene continues interrupting Peter's feeble attempt to make sense of the situation. A bright cloud appears, reminiscent of the way that God appeared at different times in the Old Testament. The cloud of God's presence appeared to Moses on Sinai. His Shekinah glory filled the tabernacle. The cloud of God's presence guided the Israelites during their wandering in the desert, and the cloud of the glory of the Lord filled Solomon's temple. The voice of God the Father from the cloud gives the same public endorsement of Jesus that was given. This is my son. And Isaiah chapter 42 verse 1. With him I am well pleased. Indicating that Jesus is both son and suffering servant. Jesus has fulfilled both the law and the prophets. Now made clear in that he is superior to Moses and Elijah whose revelations point ultimately to Jesus. Jesus is the embodied Son of God, the ultimate prophet who fulfills Moses' prophetic expectation, so the disciples must listen to him to understand his messianic mission. This gives them reassuring confirmation that he is the same master that they have known, even though they have just experienced a stunning revelation of his divine nature. When the disciples look up, they see no one except Jesus. Their focus is now exclusively on Jesus, the way Moses and Elijah would have desired. Their ultimate significance was in preparing the way for Messiah, the Son of God, and his redemptive mission. The disciples have received the most explicit revelation of Jesus' identity but they still need to fully comprehend what they have experienced. Number 3. God spoke to Jesus before the cross. At this time, Jesus was thinking of the cross and contemplating the time when he would become the sin-bearer 
and endure the wrath of God against our sins. John chapter 12 verse 27 Now my soul is troubled and deeply distressed. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour of trial and agony. But it is for this very purpose that I have come to this hour, this time and place. It troubled his soul. In such a situation, how should he pray? Can he ask his father to save him from the hour? He could not pray for this, because the purpose of his coming into the world was to go to the cross. He was born to die. John chapter 12 verse 28 Rather I will say, Father, glorify, honor, extol your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. God now spoke from heaven, saying that he had glorified his name and would glorify it again. In Jesus' earthly ministry, God's name was glorified. The thirty silent years in Nazareth, the three years of public ministry, the wonderful words and works of the Savior, all of these greatly glorified the name of the Father. However, Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension would bring God even greater glory. John chapter 12 verse 29 The crowd of people who stood nearby and heard the voice said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. In realizing that it was superhuman, they concluded that it was an angel's voice. John chapter 12 verses 30 through 31 Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now judgment is upon this world. The sentence is being passed. Now the ruler of this world, Satan, will be cast out. The ruler of this world is Satan. In a very real sense, Satan was utterly defeated at Calvary. He believed that he had finally eliminated the threat posed by the Lord Jesus once and for all. Instead, the Savior had provided a way of salvation for men, and at the same time had defeated Satan and all his hosts. The sentence has not yet been carried out on the devil, but his inevitable end has been decided. He is still going through the world carrying on his evil business, but it is just a matter of time before he will be cast into the lake of fire. John chapter 12 verse 32 And I, if and when I am lifted up from the earth on the cross, will draw all people to myself, Gentiles as well as Jews. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. The first part of this verse refers to Christ's death on the cross. As he was lifted from the earth, he was nailed to a wooden cross. The Lord said that if he were thus crucified, he would draw all peoples to himself. When the Lord Jesus spoke of being lifted up, he signified the kind of death he would die, that is, by crucifixion. Here again we have evidence of the all-knowledge of the Lord. He knew in advance that he would not die in bed or by accident but would be nailed to a cross.